Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and in today's segment we are going to discuss smallpox. Smallpox has been officially eradicated uh, by the World Health Organization anywhere between the late 70s and 1980, depending on who you ask. Um, the issue with smallpox is that many people are concerned about it since it would make a very viable bioweapon. Historically, the mortality rate for people who contract smallpox is 30%. That means one in three people who get it historically died from it. So it has earned its reputation as a killer, quite honestly. Let's understand from a survival standpoint a few things about smallpox. There's some things we need to get a hold of in order to help us better be prepared for it. First is, what is smallpox? And the answer to that is, it is a virus. Therefore, antibiotics are not going to be of any use to you if you have smallpox, unless you get a secondary infection that's bacterial. But the antibiotics are not going to stop smallpox because it is a virus. It's like comparing apples to oranges. How do we get smallpox? How is it spread? First, it is spread through prolonged face-to-face -face contact with somebody. Depending on who you ask, that can be six feet or less. So you're dealing with quarters, especially if you have a lot of people at your bug out location or you are having a large retreat group, six feet or less is going to be a, a space that a lot of people are going to be in. When somebody is exposed to smallpox, first they get these lesions in the mouth. They get these things in the mouth that look kind of funky. And then it spreads to the face and down the body to the hands and the feet. The rash is very different with smallpox than it is with chickenpox. They are similar, so a lot of healthcare providers are going to have trouble differentiating this. In one particular study that I found, 57% of physicians could not tell the difference between smallpox and chickenpox rash. So, here is a visual courtesy of Wikipedia for you to see the difference between the smallpox distribution of the rash and the chickenpox distribution. So you can see that in chicken pox, the distribution is more over the trunk of the body and less on the hands and the feet, certainly, than with smallpox. So <clears throat> historically with smallpox, there have been a few things that have been effective per ancient manuscripts with treating smallpox from a palliative care standpoint, meaning to ease the person's pain and suffering and try and help their body do its job. There are different schools of thought when you look at more ancient medicine, the herbal type especially, and I have the most familiarity with Ayurvedic medicine. And some herbs that have been used in Ayurvedic medicine historically to treat smallpox are neem and turmeric especially. Neem oil applied to the skin, per the Ayurvedic masters, has a cooling effect, but what is interesting is that neem oil does have very strong antimicrobial and antiviral properties. The same thing with turmeric. Turmeric, when applied to the skin, has a cooling effect, but it also has very strong antiviral properties. So those are some things that we can use in a survival situation to kind of help us here. Now, <clears throat> the considerations for us in a, a retreat location, a bug out location, when you have smallpox or you have one person with smallpox, the considerations here are going to be a little bit different than in a situation where you have easy access to a hospital ER. What you're looking at with folks in a bug out location where your space is at a premium, if somebody has smallpox, you're going to need to isolate that person. You're going to need to quarantine them. That means giving them their own room, if you can swing it, and they do not need to be sleeping with anybody else. Because one of the ways that you can get smallpox, aside from getting it face-to-face -face contact, is by coming in contact with contaminated bed linens and clothing. The Indians, unfortunately, learned that lesson very harshly when they were given smallpox-coated blankets. Um, if you have somebody who does have smallpox and you are the person rendering care, you're going to need to take as many precautions as you possibly can. If you have to give direct care to them, you need to be certainly wearing a mask, N95 or better. And an N95 respirator, you can get those in bulk online, certainly from Amazon. You can also get them at the grocery store. So N95 respirators are going to be a nice thing. You also need to be wearing gloves. 
in order to protect you from the person's body fluids because in smallpox the scabs start to erupt and fill with pus. It's very, very painful for the person, but that pus has the potential to infect people. So you need to keep that in mind. When you are giving care to somebody with smallpox, it is a very good idea to keep their linens, their clothing, all of their personal effects separate from other people's stuff, especially when you're laundering their linens. When you're cleaning somebody's linens, you need to be using hot water with bleach, hot water with bleach in order to kill the virus. So these are some of the things that we need to be thinking about when we're considering the survival implications of a smallpox outbreak at the bug out location or in general if things were to really get bad and you didn't have access to the standard of living and certainly the standard of medical care that we have enjoyed for quite a while in this country. So I hope it's been helpful for you today. That was our brief coverage on smallpox. I've tried to keep it short because it's such a mammoth subject and you can go on a zillion different rabbit trails, but I wanted to give you some options for being able to incorporate smallpox care and readiness to deal with smallpox into your survival regime. So for now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off and I'll see y'all later. Bye.